Thanks for crocheting with me. I am going to have to make more puppets, I can tell. We have our three main pieces done for our mitt. But before we join those, we need to put our faces on. So I've made all my pieces and I haven't got them all ready to be attached yet because I wanted to kind of show you how I how I go about that. We have two, the two teeth. They're gonna go down here and his big nose. And these are the spikes, one piece of the spikes. Okay, before I sew my pieces on, I get them kind of prepped and ready to do that. And I usually do this as I finish each one, but I only need one yarn tail to sew the piece on. So I'm going to sew, I'm gonna weave in the other one to the back of the piece um, and cut it a little bit short. Now, since this is a scrubby and it's going to be used a lot and washed a lot, more so than a hat, um, these yarn tails need to be secured a little bit better and left a little bit longer so that they don't just work out in the wash or when being used. So I'm going to weave it in and out to the back and it is going to be trapped between the two pieces so I can leave this a little bit longer than I normally would. I just need to make sure that the whole thing gets trapped behind that between the two pieces. So the slip stitch row is the top of the tooth. So it's going to end up being like this. And I've got a second one. And I also, um, as I sew this on, I do some shaping and make it look better. So I will show you that also. So at this point, I'm just getting rid of this extra yarn tail and getting it all ready to attach. Like I said, just leaving that a little bit longer and then when I'll just make sure it's between the two layers when I sew when I sew it in place. Now, if this was a hat or something else, I probably would just stitch down this bottom edge. And so therefore, I would need to work this yarn tail down the side or something so that I am there, or uh, it could be, I could have left the beginning yarn tail, the one that was the long one. Since this is a scrubby, I'm gonna sew down everything really well so that it stays nice and neat and doesn't end up all bleh, you know, it's just gonna be nice. I've already done the nose. It's, everything has one yarn tail. There's my nose piece. Okay, so those are all ready. Now, I don't know if you noticed or not, but since one of the options for sewing these together, I am going to work, I'm gonna stitch them together with my hook. When I got to this point, instead of finishing it off, because I don't wanna cut my yarn, I just pulled the loop big, took my hook out, and then it's gonna be, um, ready to just slip back on and do it again. All right, so let me show you how I did the hair. Now I wanted, or spikes, or however you want to call this, have red um, cotton yarn and my H hook. I'm going to chain five. So I'm going to attach it to my hook and I'm gonna work five chains. So one, two, three, four, and five. Then I'm going to do a slip stitch in the second chain from the hook, a single crochet in the next, and then a half double crochet in each of the next two. So I have finished one part, just that first part. So this time I'm going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and work it the same way. Slip stitch in the second chain from my hook, single crochet in the next, and then a half double crochet in each of the next two. And then I'm going to leave that last chain unworked. I'm gonna leave that. And we're gonna keep working this way. So 
So we're not going to turn or anything. We're just going to keep working across. Now, this time I want, this is for my center spike, and I want it to be a little bit taller, so I added one more chain. So I'm going to chain seven this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And I'm going to start it the same way, but it does have one extra stitch. So slip stitch in the second chain from the hook, single crochet in the next. Now notice, when I work into the chain, I tend to have little gappies or pull the chain up, and I try really hard not to do that. So I place my thumb and finger together and hold that so it doesn't pull the chain. I'm gonna work my single crochet. Then I'm gonna work a half double in each of the next three. So one, two, holding the bottom, and three. And then still leaving that chain between. So there's our first three. I'm just gonna continue. This time I'm gonna go back down because the middle one is the only tall one. This time I'm gonna chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Slip stitch in the second. Slip stitch in, there we go. Then single crochet in the next. Then work a half double in each of the next two. One, two, and leaving that spacer chain empty in between. I'm gonna work one, work one more spike. So I'm gonna chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Slip stitch in the second. Single crochet, and then a half double in each of the next two. Now, when I finished the first piece, the first spikes, I cut both tails, okay? On this one, I don't want to cut it. And at the end of this, I'm going to chain one, flip my piece over. Now, I've got my first set of spiky hair, and they're, they're basically the same at the beginning and the end. Started with two, shorter, made the middle one taller, two shorter. So I just want to flip this one over. Doesn't matter if it's the beginning or the end or whatever. But I just want to lay the second piece of hair on top of the first piece. And it doesn't, I don't have to have all of these lined up perfectly. All I'm worried about is the first spike piece on each, like each piece. So I've got top and bottom. I mean, yeah, two pieces here. So I'm going to lay them together, and this step I am going to single crochet up the side of each, in the tips, back down the valleys, on as I go across. So I'm going to insert my hook in the first stitch at the bottom of this spike, and in the same stitch on the second piece of hair. And I'm going to single crochet those together. I'm going to do the same thing on the next stitch. So insert in the next stitch on the top layer and the bottom layer, single crochet those together. Now I'm at the tip of each spike, I'm inserting my hook in the tip of each one and I'm going to work a single crochet, a half double crochet, because I want to keep this kind of spiky but I also need to work multiples to help it turn, and then a single crochet. So in the same spot. I have worked a single crochet, a half double crochet, and a single crochet. Okay, now I'm going to work a single crochet in the next one, and in the next one. So I have three down the side here that I'm working. And then remember how we have the little gap chain, the little chain in between each spike. So. I am just going to slip stitch these two chains together. So I want them to stay together so that they're easier to sew in place. All right, I am ready to start putting my pieces together. So I've got my front piece and I've attached the hair and his face. And then I made a second piece and on this one, I did just a rectangle, but if you wanted to go all the way down, you know, um, I just 
did a chain of 23, 22. I did a chain of whatever you start with. And then I just did rows back and forth just to cover the middle section. But you could do a whole piece. And that's probably what I would suggest doing. It's uh, It would probably be easier in the end and make it more even and everything. So, But for picture purposes, when you're watching this and go, oh, what's that thing? That's why. This is my second layer, and it should be the same size as the front one. So I have that for the front piece. Then I have the back piece, and then this is the inside, and this is obviously the wrong side of my piece. The right side is the one that I have done the single crochet all the way around the outside edge. Now, what I'm going to do, this is the one that I actually pulled out a little stitch here on this one. Um, I'm actually going to lay these this on top of this piece. Now, when this goes together, the blue parts are long, end up being a little bit longer because it's where the hand is going to slip in. And so I am going to make sure that when I start to crochet the layers together, I don't want to lay the blue one all the way down. I'm going to keep it up about a half an inch is about all that needs to go there. And when I come back around, you'll see how we'll join those. But for now, I am going to take and just work a couple, I'm going to slip stitch down the side too. So I've done one and then this is my second one. All right, so I can lay the pieces together and I'm going to single crochet around the outside edge. So if you wanted, you could pin these together. And I just I have some yarn needles, embroidery needles close by. So I'm just going to place that on my first corner so that I can keep track, keep those together. And then I'm just going to work through both layers. So I'm going to stick my hook in the next stitch and then check and find approximately the next stitch here and I'm going to work a single crochet now if that really bugs you to just kind of do uh, about here you could count how many stitches are from this kind of bend to this bend and find the middle and then go two over from there and you know make it um, even out more I mean if you don't feel comfortable eyeballing it that's fine as well so I am just working a single crochet in each across and I am pulling it kind of snug at this point I'm just because I don't want a bunch of loops don't if, if you tend to crochet a little bit loosely when you're joining like this like I do I just kind of give it a little bit of a tug now if I pull it super tight the, the sides are gonna kind of pucker together so just kind of watch your gauge and see how you do that and make sure that it's laying flat and when I come down here to the first little bend here's my straight row and I have a little bit of a bend here a little bit of a bend here if I need a little bit of extra room to help turn that I could work two single crochet in each of these bends two single crochet there in one stitch creating an increase and that will help the fabric just lay a little bit smoother so I have now worked around the outer edge and I've come here and I've got about two in two stitches left use the rows of the inside mouthpiece to kind of make sure you've got it even okay so now I'm ready to add the second piece and this is my um, the front and so if you did the second layer you will want to make sure that you catch those also I am going to start by actually working um, single crochet across the top of these to hold them together so I'm just going to insert my hook into the first stitch of one piece and the first stitch of the second piece and work a single crochet across and then in the corners I'm going to do a single crochet chain one single crochet to help that corner turn a little bit better so this will just um, help hold these together. I have done my two top edges together and two stitches down the side. And I'm going to find the placement for it on this one. Now, 
I did about two stitches down on this side. What I'm going to do again is line up the nose or mouth part here. Any yarn tails I've got left over, I'm just going to stick in between there so that between those two layers to get rid of them. So I've got these two edges. That's my first place that I need to make sure is really lining up. So I'm going to pin those in place. And then I want to make sure I'm using all the stitches on the side here. And in a minute, we're going to go um, sew these edges together. But I want to make sure that I start working into that next unused stitch. And it looks like I've come down one more, one too many on my blue when I did the blue piece, because that lines up just perfect with that next stitch. So I'm just going to start right there working my single crochet. So again, I'm just doing it exactly the same way I did the first half. I'm doing a single crochet to join the inside mouth and outer pieces together. So I'm just going to keep working around there. And then um, I'll come back and show you how we'll finish this up. Make it all nice and neat and tidy. All right, so I have now done single crochet all the way around to hold my pieces together. And I'm back here where um, the two pieces meet and I wanted to show you what I'm gonna do. So I want the sides to join together to reinforce it so these just don't rip apart. So I'm going to now lay the what's left over from each blue section and single crochet those together. Now, I think I'm going to go through that same, my last stitch I just did, and the last stitch on the other one. So these have already been worked into, and I'm just going to single crochet those together and pull them kind of snug. And the next stitches, and if they don't line up so you have the exact same amount of stitches, just try to make it work the best it can so this top edge is nice and flush. Uh, you can always get out a yarn needle and just stitch these together. But the reason I'm doing this is because I want to continue and single crochet across the top here. And I'll explain that in just a second. All right, so I have now single crocheted the sides together. So I've got this nice edge. Now I'm going to single crochet across the top here for two reasons. One, so that when I get over to this side, I can single crochet this edge together. But also to make it easier to put your hand in because this side will be just a little bit taller. Then I'm going to give you a couple of options after that. Now I have this little yarn that I was working over. This is just a yarn tail. I'm going to bring it up and work over it some more here just to finish that off so I'm all done with that part. Now I can already see here um, when I'm going from my sides to the top, I think I would like a chain one and a single crochet again in that same stitch so that, yep, so it turns really nice and even there. And I'm just gonna single crochet across this top row again. Now, one of our snappy friends had an awesome idea um, that to use this as a puppet in a classroom, I believe. That's how she had mentioned it. And when I was making this, I was toying with the idea of making a cuff so that as you put your hand in, it would have a cuff and I couldn't decide. But then after thinking about it in that kind of a situation, and also if you're using it to scrub a little kid or different things, um, it would be easier to hold if it did have that added cuff. So I'm gonna kind of show you that as well as an option you can just finish with this step that i'm on here and be done or you can um continue on and add that cuff if you want so i'm just working across here and then i'm going to take um my yarn and notice i'm almost out so i'm hoping i have some more of this i'd used it for another project and i just kind of ran out right there so hopefully i have uh, some more of that but I'm going to come over and take my two layers here on the sides and crochet and then end with a slip stitch down here. Then I'll come back and show you kind of the idea for the, the mitt.
All right, I had just enough to finish off um, the sides. So you could be done here. If I had a little bit more blue, I think I would have just done one more edge across of single crochet or at least around like I'm going to show you now. So I'm going to use this green that matches my nose. And I'm going to take and attach and then I'm just going to single crochet all the way around. Now when I get to the corners, I am going to single crochet two together. So I'm going to insert my hook in a stitch on the front part and a stitch on the back part, single crochet together and work around. So I'll show you. I found that helps hold it too. Okay, so I am going to work a single crochet decrease. So single crochet two together and picking up a yarn in this stitch and one in a stitch on the front. Just kind of make it go where I want it to go. And those two together and I'm pulling it snug. And the reason I did that decrease is just to kind of help it come together and be secure. Not because I want one less stitch necessarily, just to make them be together. You will join the round. Okay. And then I'm just going to keep doing that all the way around and do the exact same thing on the other corner. Okay, at the end of this round, I had about 46 stitches, and it might, yours might vary just a little bit. I did slip stitch to join, and I'm going to chain one. Now, I'm going to work a round of half double crochet, and I want to decrease it eight times. So you can either go through and figure out the math. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work three decreases along this side, one at each of my corners, and three decreases on this side. So I'm going to start by working half double crochet in that same stitch. Then I'm going to work one of my decreases, half double crochet together right there. Then, and I've already started part way in, but then I'm going to work a few half double crochet stitches, do another decrease here, a few more, do another decrease here, right here at the corner. Then I'm going to divide this side in thirds, one in the middle and one in either side of that just so that I end up decreasing this by eight stitches because I want it to start kind of going in a little bit each time so when I'm done with this and I come back around and join I should have 38 stitches left and I'm going to work a couple of rounds like that so that I can kind of shrink it in so it's going to grab onto our wrist just a little bit more so I'm going to do two rounds of decreasing eight stitches each round. And I'll write this out in the pattern and make it easier for you to follow that way. So I am going to do one round with eight decreases, one round of eight of half double crochet stitches, decreasing eight times, slip, to slip stitch to join, and then do another round the same way. So then when I'm done with that round, I will have 30 stitches left. Okay, I love how this is coming together. I just think this cuff is the perfect little addition to our little monster mitt. So I have done two rounds of half double crochet with eight decreases at each on each row. So I have 30 stitches now. And it's a good if I put it in right. Chomp, 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 chomp. Yay, be cute. Um I think that's going to be good. I'm going to now switch and do some post stitches because I like um, the post ribbing, which uh, I usually do. Um, my favorite is front post, half double crochet, back, back post, half double crochet. You could also do this just as um, front post, double crochet, and back post, double crochet if you want. I'm going to do the half double. So these are worked around the posts from the previous row. So I'm going to start by doing a front post half double crochet. Then I'm going to do a back post half double crochet. And I'm just going to keep working that around. And, and this is just going to kind of snug it in a little bit and 
make plus make the cuff a little bit longer so that it'll cover your hand so I have worked all the way around I've got one round of the ribbing I think I will add one more on there and then call it good so it doesn't get up too far you could easily add more rounds if you wanted but I think it's coming out nicely and I like the contrasting yarn too it kind of just adds more color to him and and I like color so there's our little guy so far and I hope you'll share pics with me if you make one thanks for crocheting with me I am going to have to make more puppets I can tell <laughs> thanks